September 6. The River of Healing In my vision the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing to the right of the altar on its south side. The man brought me outside the wall through the north gateway and led me around to the eastern entrance. There I could see the water flowing out through the south side of the east gateway. Measuring as he went, he took me along the stream for 1,750 feet and then led me across. The water was up to my ankles. He measured off another 1,750 feet and led me across again. This time, the water was up to my knees. After another 1,750 feet, it was up to my waist. Then he measured another 1,750 feet, and the river was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in, but too deep to walk through. He asked me, Have you been watching, son of man? Then he led me back along the river bank. When I returned, I was surprised by the sight of many trees growing on both sides of the river. Then he said to me, This river flows east through the desert into the valley of the Dead Sea. The waters of this stream will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea fresh and pure. There will be swarms of living things wherever the water of this river flows. Fish will abound in the Dead Sea, for its waters will become fresh. Life will flourish wherever this water flows. Fishermen will stand along the shores of the Dead Sea, all the way from En Gedi to En Eglim. The shores will be covered with nets drying in the sun. Fish of every kind will fill the Dead Sea, just as they fill the Mediterranean. But the marshes and swamps will not be purified. They will still be salty. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall, and there will always be fruit on their branches. There will be a new crop every month, for they are watered by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be for food and the leaves for healing. Boundaries for the Land this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Divide the land in this way for the twelve tribes of Israel. The descendants of Joseph will be given two shares of land. Otherwise, each tribe will receive an equal share. I took a solemn oath and swore that I would give this land to your ancestors, and it will now come to you as your possession. These are the boundaries of the land. The northern border will run from the Mediterranean toward Hethlon, then on through Lebohamoth to Zedad. Then it will run to Berotha and Sibrim, which are on the border between Damascus and Hamath, and finally to Hazer Hedekon on the border of Haran. So the northern border will run from the Mediterranean to Hazar Enon on the border between Hamath to the north and Damascus to the south. The eastern border starts at a point between Haran and Damascus and runs south along the Jordan River between Israel and Gilead, past the Dead Sea, and as far south as Tamar. This will be the eastern border. The southern border will go west from Tamar to the waters of Mirabah at Kadesh, and then follow the course of the Brook of Egypt to the Mediterranean. This will be the southern border. On the west side, the Mediterranean itself will be your border from the southern border to the point where the northern border begins, opposite Lebohamoth. Divide the land within these boundaries among the tribes of Israel. Distribute the land as an allotment for yourselves and for the foreigners who have joined you and are raising their families among you. They will be like native-born Israelites to you and will receive an allotment among the tribes. These foreigners are to be given land within the territory of the tribe with whom they now live. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Division of the Land Here is the list of the tribes of Israel and the territory each is to receive. The territory of Dan is in the extreme north. Its boundary line follows the Hethlon Road to Lebohamoth and then runs on to Hazar Enon on the border of Damascus, with Hamath to the north. Dan's territory extends all the way across the land of Israel from east to west. Asher's territory lies south of Dan's and also extends from east to west. Naphtali's land lies south of Asher's, also extending from east to west. Then comes Manasseh, south of Naphtali, and its territory also extends from east to west. South of Manasseh is Ephraim, and then Reuben, and then Judah, all of whose boundaries extend from east to west. 
South of Judah is the land set aside for a special purpose. It will be eight and one-third miles wide and will extend as far east and west as the tribal territories, with the temple at the center. The area set aside for the Lord's temple will be eight and one-third miles long and six and two-third miles wide. For the priests, there will be a strip of land measuring eight and one-third miles long by three and one-third miles wide, with the Lord's temple at the center. This area is set aside for the ordained priests, the descendants of Zadok, who served me faithfully and did not go astray with the people of Israel and the rest of the Levites. It will be their special portion when the land is distributed, the most sacred land of all. Next to the priest's territory will lie the land where the other Levites will live. The land allotted to the Levites will be the same size and shape as that belonging to the priests, eight and one-third miles long and three and one-third miles wide. Together, these portions of land will measure eight and one-third miles long by six and two-third miles wide. None of this special land may ever be sold or traded or used by others, for it belongs to the Lord. It is set apart as holy. An additional strip of land eight and one-third miles long by one and two-third miles wide, south of the sacred temple area, will be allotted for public use, homes, pasture lands, and common lands, with a city at the center. The city will measure one and a half miles on each side, north, south, east, and west. Open lands will surround the city for 150 yards in every direction. Outside the city, there will be a farming area that stretches three and one-third miles to the east and three and one-third miles to the west along the border of the sacred area. This farmland will produce food for the people working in the city. Those who come from the various tribes to work in the city may farm it. This entire area, including the sacred lands and the city, is a square that measures eight and one-third miles on each side. The areas that remain to the east and to the west of the sacred lands and the city will belong to the prince. Each of these areas will be eight and one-third miles wide, extending in opposite directions to the eastern and western borders of Israel, with the sacred lands and the sanctuary of the temple in the center. So the prince's land will include everything between the territories allotted to Judah and Benjamin, except for the areas set aside for the sacred lands and the city. These are the territories allotted to the rest of the tribes. Benjamin's territory lies just south of the prince's lands, and it extends across the entire land of Israel from east to west. South of Benjamin's territory lies that of Simeon, also extending across the land from east to west. Next is the territory of Issachar, with the same eastern and western boundaries. Then comes the territory of Zebulun, which also extends across the land from east to west. The territory of Gad is just south of Zebulun, with the same borders to the east and west. The southern border of Gad runs from Tamar to the waters of Mirabah at Kadesh, and then follows the brook of Egypt to the Mediterranean. These are the allotments that will be set aside for each tribe's exclusive possession. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. The Gates of the City These will be the exits to the city. On the north wall, which is one and a half miles long, there will be three gates, each one named after a tribe of Israel. The first will be named for Reuben, the second for Judah, and the third for Levi. On the east wall, also one and a half miles long, the gates will be named for Joseph, Benjamin, and Dan. The south wall, also one and a half miles long, will have gates named for Simeon, Issachar, and Zebulon. And on the west wall, also one and a half miles long, the gates will be named for Gad, Asher, and Naphtali. The distance around the entire city will be six miles, and from that day the name of the city will be the Lord is there. Nebuchadnezzar to Conquer Egypt On April 26, the first day of the new year, during the 27th year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, the army of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon fought so hard against Tyre that the warriors' heads were rubbed bare and their shoulders were raw and blistered. 
Yet Nebuchadnezzar and his army won no plunder to compensate them for all their work. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says, I will give the land of Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He will carry off its wealth, plundering everything it has, so he can pay his army. Yes, I have given him the land of Egypt as a reward for his work, says the sovereign Lord, because he was working for me when he destroyed Tyre. And the day will come when I will cause the ancient glory of Israel to revive. And then, Ezekiel, your words will be respected. Then they will know that I am the Lord. A Sad Day for Egypt This is another message that came to me from the Lord. Son of man, prophesy and give this message from the Sovereign Lord. Weep and wail for that day, for the terrible day is almost here. The day of the Lord. It is a day of clouds and gloom, a day of despair for the nations. A sword will come against Egypt, and those who are slaughtered will cover the ground. Its wealth will be carried away, and its foundations destroyed. The land of Ethiopia will be ravished. Ethiopia, Libya, Lydia, all Arabia, and all their other allies will be destroyed in that war. For this is what the Lord says, All of Egypt's allies will fall, and the pride of her power will end. From Migdal to Aswan, they will be slaughtered by the sword, says the Sovereign Lord. Egypt will be desolate, surrounded by desolate nations, and its cities will be in ruins, surrounded by other ruined cities. And the people of Egypt will know that I am the Lord when I have set Egypt on fire and destroyed all their allies. At that time, I will send swift messengers in ships to terrify the complacent Ethiopians. Great panic will come upon them on that day of Egypt's certain destruction. Watch for it. It is sure to come. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, By the power of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, I will destroy the hordes of Egypt. He and his armies, the most ruthless of all, will be sent to demolish the land. They will make war against Egypt until slaughtered Egyptians cover the ground. I will dry up the Nile River and sell the land to wicked men. I will destroy the land of Egypt and everything in it by the hands of foreigners. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will smash the idols of Egypt and the images at Memphis. There will be no rulers left in Egypt. Terror will sweep the land. I will destroy southern Egypt, set fire to Zoan, and bring judgment against Thebes. I will pour out my fury on Pelasiam, the strongest fortress of Egypt, and I will stamp out the hordes of Thebes. Yes, I will set fire to all Egypt. Pelasiam will be racked with pain. Thebes will be torn apart. Memphis will live in constant terror. The young men of Heliopolis and Bubastis will die in battle, and the women will be taken away as slaves. When I come to break the proud strength of Egypt, it will be a dark day for Tappanese too. A dark cloud will cover Tappanese, and its daughters will be led away as captives. And so I will greatly punish Egypt, and they will know that I am the Lord. Hope for Israel's Royal Line In the thirty-seventh year of the exile of King Jehoiachin of Judah, evil Merodach ascended to the Babylonian throne. He was kind to Jehoiachin and released him from prison on April 2 of that year. He spoke kindly to Jehoiachin and gave him a higher place than all the other exiled kings in Babylon. He supplied Jehoiachin with new clothes to replace his prison garb and allowed him to dine in the king's presence for the rest of his life. So the Babylonian king gave him a regular food allowance as long as he lived. From Jeremiah In the thirty-seventh year of the exile of King Jehoiachin of Judah, evil Merodach ascended to the Babylonian throne. He was kind to Jehoiachin and released him from prison on March 31 of that year. He spoke kindly to Jehoiachin and gave him a higher place than all the other exiled kings in Babylon. He supplied Jehoiachin with new clothes to replace his prison garb and allowed him to dine in the king's presence for the rest of his life. So the Babylonian king gave him a regular food allowance as long as he lived. This continued until the day of his death.